Hello and welcome to day 283 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Arileva. Kindly share this broadcast with your friends, family, and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles today. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, ready to receive the truth and wisdom that your word offers us today, the 283rd day of our Bible journey. We thank you for the gift of your scriptures, which guide, encourage, and strengthen us in every season of life. As we open our Bibles and read your word today, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be present with us, illuminating the truth hidden within these sacred passages. Grant us understanding, Lord, and help us to apply these lessons to our daily lives. Let our hearts be open to correction, encouragement, and the direction you want to give us. Father, we pray that our minds and spirits be aligned with your will. May these readings draw us closer to you, transforming our lives so that we may reflect your love, your grace, and your righteousness in all we do. Guide us, O Lord, as we seek to walk in your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Day 283, October 10, 2024. 365 Days Bible Reading Old Testament, Jeremiah 21, Jeremiah 22, Jeremiah 23, 1-8 New Testament, 1 Thessalonians 2, 17 to 19. 1 Thessalonians 3. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 119, verse 9 to 16. Old Testament, NIV version, Jeremiah 21, verse 1 to 14. God rejects Zedekiah's request. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent to him Pashu, son of Malkija, and the priest Zephaniah, son of Maseah. They said, Inquire now of the Lord for us, because Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, is attacking us. Perhaps the Lord will perform wonders for us in times past, so that he will withdraw from us. But Jeremiah answered them, Tell Zedekiah, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I am about to turn against you the weapons of war that are in your hands, which you are using to fight the king of Babylon, and the Babylonians who are outside the wall besieging you, and I will gather them inside the city. I myself will fight against you with an outstretched arm and a mighty arm in furious anger and in great wrath. I will strike down those who live in the city, both man and beast, and they will die of a terrible plague. After that, declares the Lord, I will give Zedekiah, king of Judah, his officials and the people in the city who survived the plague, sword and famine, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and to their enemies who want to kill them. He will put them to the sword. He will show them no mercy or pity or compassion. Furthermore, tell the people, this is what the Lord says, See, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death. Whoever stays in the city will die by the sword, famine or plague. But whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are besieging you will live. They will escape with their lives. I have determined to do the city harm and not good, declares the Lord. It will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will destroy it with fire. Moreover, say to the royal house of Judah, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says to you. House of David, administer justice every morning. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed, or my wrath will break out and burn like fire because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. I am against you, Jerusalem. You will live above this valley in the rocky plateau, declares the Lord. You will say, who can come against us? 
who can enter our refuge. I will punish you as your deeds deserve, declares the Lord. I will kindle a fire in your forest that will consume everything around you. Jeremiah 22, 1-30 to Judgment against wicked kings This is what the Lord says, Go down to the palace of the king of Judah and proclaim this message there. Hear the word of the Lord to you. King of Judah, you will sit on David's throne. You, your officials, and your people will come through these gates. This is what the Lord says, Do what is just and right. Rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you are careful to carry out these commands, then kings who sit on David's throne who come through the gates of this palace, riding in chariots and on horses, accompanied by their officials and their people. But if you do not obey these commands, declares the Lord, I swear by myself that this palace will become a ruin. For this is what the Lord says about the palace of the king of Judah. Though you are like Gilead to me, like the summit of Lebanon, I will surely make you like a wasteland, like towns not inhabited. I will send destroyers against you, each man with his weapons. And they will cut up your fine cedar beams and throw them into the fire. People from many nations will pass by the city and will ask one another, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this great city? And the answer will be, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God and have worshipped and served other gods. Do not weep for the dead king or mourn his loss. Rather, weep bitterly for him who is exiled because he will never return nor see his native land again. For this is what the Lord says about Shalom, son of Josiah, who succeeded his father as king of Judah but has gone from this place. He will never return. He will die in the place where they have led him captive. He will not see this land again. Woe to him who built his palace by unrighteousness, his upper rooms by injustice, making his own people work for nothing, not paying them for their labor. He says, I will build myself a great palace with spacious upper rooms. So he makes large windows in it, panels it with cedar, and decorates it in red. Does it make you a king to have more and more cedar? Did not your father have food and drink? He did what was right and just, so all went well with him. He defended the cause of the poor and needy, and so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord? But... Your eyes and your heart are set only on dishonest gain, on shedding innocent blood and on oppressing and extortion. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. They will not mourn for him. Alas, my brother. Alas, my sister. They will not mourn for him. Alas, my master. Alas, his splendor. He will have the burial of a donkey dragged away and thrown outside the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out. Let your voice be heard in Bashan. Cry out from Abarim, for all your allies are crushed. I warned you when you felt secure, but you said, I will not listen. This has been your way from your youth. You have not obeyed me. The wind will drive all your shepherds away, and your allies will go into exile. Then you will be ashamed and disgraced because of all your wickedness. You will live in Lebanon, who are nestled in cedar buildings. How you will groan when pangs come upon you, pain like that of a woman in labor. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, even if you, Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim, King of Judah, wear a signet ring on my right hand, I would still pull you off. I will deliver you into the hands of those who want to kill you, those you fear, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and the Babylonians. I will hurl you, and the mother will give you birth into another country, where neither of you was born, and there you both will die. You will never come back to the land you long to return to. 
Is this man Jehovah King a despised, broken pot, an object no one wants? Why will he and his children be hurled out, cast into a land they do not know? O oh, land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime. For none of his offsprings will prosper. None will sit on the throne of David or rule any more in Judah. Jeremiah 23, 1-8 The Righteous Branch Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. So then, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt. But they will say, As surely as the Lord lives who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them, then they will live in their own land. New Testament NIV Version 1 Thessalonians 2, 17-19 Paul's longing to see the Thessalonians. But brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you, for we wanted to come to you, certainly I, Paul, did, again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed. You are our glory and joy. First Thessalonians 3, 1 Thessalonians 3.1-13 So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one will be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. Timothy's encouraging report, but... Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us and that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now, we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 119, verse 9 to 16. Beth, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. 
I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord, teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Amen. Lessons learned from the Old Testament verses. From Jeremiah 21, God's judgment is just. When leaders and people turn away from God, rejecting his ways, judgment follows. Jeremiah warns King Zedekiah that destruction is imminent. For those who oppose God, reminding us that disobedience has consequences. Responsibility of Leadership Jeremiah 22 God condemns unjust and corrupt leaders who fail to uphold righteousness. Leaders are called to care for the poor, the oppressed, and act with justice. This teaches the importance of godly leadership that upholds justice and fairness. Hope for Restoration Jeremiah 23, 1-8 Although God condemns the unfaithful shepherds as the leaders, He promises a future leader, a righteous branch, Jesus, who will reign wisely. This assures us that even in times of destruction and exile, God has a plan for redemption and restoration. Lessons learned from the New Testament verses, spiritual longing and connection. 1 Thessalonians 2, 17-19 Paul's deep longing to be with the Thessalonian believers reflects the power of spiritual community. It shows us the importance of maintaining connections with fellow believers, encouraging one another despite challenges. Encouragement through trials, 1 Thessalonians 3 Paul expresses his concern for the Thessalonians' faith amid persecution that finds joy in their perseverance. This reminds us that trials can strengthen faith and we should be encouraged to stand firm despite difficulties. The importance of building each other up spiritually is emphasized. Lessons learned from Psalm 119 verse 9 to 16. The power of God's word in purity, Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11. The psalmist highlights that keeping one's way pure comes through living according to God's word. Memorizing and meditating on scripture helps protect us from sin. Delight in God's word, Psalm 119, 12 to 16. The psalmist finds joy and delight in God's commandments meditating on his precepts and decrees. This encourages us to love and cherish God's word, making it central to our lives for guidance and transformation. These passages teach the significance of godly leadership, perseverance in trials, the need for spiritual community, and the power of God's word to guide and purify our hearts. Faith declarations from Jeremiah 21 22 and 23 to 23 1 to 8 i declare that i choose to walk in obedience to the lord avoiding the path of disobedience and rebellion i trust that god's plans are just and true and i surrender to his will in my life i confess that as a leader in my family work or community i will uphold justice and righteousness I will defend the cause of the needy, the oppressed, and the vulnerable. I choose to lead with integrity and fairness as God commands. I declare that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want. Even when I face unjust leadership, I believe God will raise up a righteous shepherd to guide and restore me. I trust in the promise of Jesus Christ, my Redeemer, who reigns with wisdom and righteousness. Faith declarations from 1 Thessalonians 2, 17-19 and 1 Thessalonians 3. I declare that I will remain connected to my brothers and sisters in Christ, seeking to build and strengthen our faith together. 
No trial or distance will separate me from the love and encouragement that God provides through fellowship. I confess that even in times of trials and persecution, I will stand firm in my faith. I declare that God strengthens and sustains me, and I will not be moved by hardship. I choose to encourage and build up others in their faith, knowing that together we are stronger. Faith declarations from Psalm 119 verse 9 to 16. I declare that I will live a life of purity by following God's word. His word is hidden in my heart and it protects me from sin. I seek the Lord with all my heart and I will never stray from his commands. I confess that I delight in the statutes of the Lord and I meditate on his precepts day and night. I find joy in keeping his decrees and I will not forget his word. God's word is my guide, my joy, and my source of wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you will like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvation in christ 101 at gmail.com that is salvation in christ 101 at gmail.com god bless you please remember to share this broadcast with your friends family and loved ones encourage them to join us as we read our bibles this year kindly subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok at sandra boyo Arelaba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.